There was some really big Man of Steel movie news this weekend, but what was it? Yeah, um, Zack Snyder, and of course this is what everybody's been talking about, uh, Zack Snyder came out uh, in Hall H to do the uh, part of the Warner Brothers panel. And he first the, the first thing he did was that he announced officially, um, we are doing another Man of Steel movie. That was the first thing he confirmed. And of course, uh, everybody who was in the room kind of figured that out. By <laughs> Zack, Snyder. Zack Snyder came out to announce that he's been fired and that he won't be doing it anymore soon right now. So he he's comes out. out. Yeah. <laughs> Drop out, kids. Um, so he comes out and he announces officially, he goes, first thing I can tell, we are doing another Superman movie. And that was great. And I think um, the big news about the Superman movie, I was telling them, is uh, of course that, uh, here's the big news. Amy Adams is returning as Lois Lane. That is the big news of Superman 2. Uh, of course, that's not true. Yay! <laughs> but Amy Super Adams, happy. Amy Adams is returning for Man of Steel 2. Yay! Uh, so is, uh, uh, who played his mother? Who plays Clark's mother again? I, I Diane love Lane. Thank Diane you. Lane. Diane Lane is coming back as well. Uh, so basically, the whole cast is coming back. But then he said, but you know, I've been scouring all the, 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 the issues in DC Comics, trying to figure out what other element can we put into this thing. And we came up with this. And then what he did was... He brings up Harry Lennox, who plays the general, the, the U.S. military general in the film. Um, and it, did anybody else notice that there was a Matrix reunion going on there in the film between the general and Morpheus? Anyway, I don't <laughs> think they're, although I don't think they're ever on screen together at the same time, but still. Um, so he comes out, and he doesn't say anything. All he does was read this one passage. And, and I'm struggling here. I... I, I I, we don't have Zoom. I'm getting goosebumps on my arm right now just For thinking real. about this passage. Confirmed. You, like real goosebumps just thinking about this passage. He comes out to read this passage. Now, the comic, the graphic novel that changed everything, everything in the world of comics, was uh, Miller's The Dark Knight Returns. That is the that that changed a, a whole perception of Batman, and it changed it ushered in a really a new era era of, of comic books. I mean, it just changed the whole industry. And of course, you know, The Dark Knight Returns is is a one shot story set in the future about thirty years. Batman has been retired for a long time. He's still a beast. He comes out of retirement to clean up scum. Superman is sent to stop this vigilante Batman because they don't want vigilantes anymore. And Superman and Batman come to come to blows. Blah blah blah. So. And there's this passage from it, and Harry Lennox comes out and he reads a passage from that comic, and it was amazing. We were just talking about this. You could hear in the reaction from Hall H, a lot of people didn't recognize the passage, but the people who did were gasping. Here's the passage. <laughs> Harry Lennox comes out, and all he does is he reads this. I want you to remember, Clark, in all the years to come, in all your most private moments, I want you to remember my hand at your throat. I want you to remember the one man who beat you. Now, in The Dark Knight Returns, that is something that Batman says to Superman at the end of their fight as Batman has beaten Superman and is on him and is, has him by the throat and he reads those lines. And there are some people in that hall who recognized it and they were going, oh my God, oh my God, and lo <laughs> lots of expletives as well. And then at that moment, this logo comes on the screen, the Superman logo, with the Batman logo behind it. And the place goes bananas. Absolutely bananas. And in sports terminology, Marvel was there. Look, everybody knows how much we love Marvel. Yeah. Uh, Avengers, greatest comic book uh, movie of all time. Sorry, you know, Batman Begins and all that kind of stuff, but Avengers is the best one ever. But I'm sorry, and Marvel had lots of stuff there. They had Loki there, and they had the Guardians of the Galaxy there, and they had Captain America there, and they had Thor there. They had all this stuff. With one punch, <laughs> with one punch, DC and Warner Brothers knocked out Marvel and won Comic-Con. With one announcement. Because I'm telling you, some people who are Marvel fanboys, I am both a DC and a Marvel fanboy. So all my fellow Marvel fanboys was, no, 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 that was just one announcement. You know, no. we had all these great announcements. And there weren't really many announcements, just a no. lot of great stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, all this great all this great stuff, that's fine. Sorry. But all anybody at Comic-Con was buzzing about after that announcement was made was Batman and Superman. Now... Uh, just a couple of interesting observations here about this. There's some things that we know about this, and I don't think the official press release has gone out yet. Somebody at Warner Brothers slipped me the official press release. 
Um, and w it kind of confirms what we glean from the fact from this passage that Len Lennox read. And in the press release, the words were, the two greatest superheroes of all time, and once again, all due respect to all, all the great characters and everything in Marvel, it, it's Batman and it's Superman. Those are the two greatest comic book characters ever. They, they just are. Um, but this is the two greatest superheroes of all time face off in 2015. That statement, coupled with this passage that they read, mm -hmm. This ain't just going to be, hey, Superman meets his newest buddy, Batman, down at the soda shop, and they decide to go out and fight crime. Nah, no, nah, no, nah, no, this is going to be what we have all been wanting. This is going <laughs> to be what I have been crying tears for, laying in my bed at night for over 15 years. This is going to be Batman versus Superman. And it's going to be in the context of Superman 2. This is going to be Man of Steel 2. And it's going to be Batman versus Superman. And no doubt it's going to end with them as friends and allies. Maybe not close friends, but allies. And probably see the seed sown for a Justice League movie. Um, I, I, my mind is exploding. <laughs> and I have said, before, I'm going to throw this over to Amherst here in a second. I have said forever, forever. And I didn't know that Warner Brothers would think this way. I've been saying they need to. I've been saying you, need, you can't start this new cinematic universe with a Wonder Woman standalone. You can't start it with a, with a, a, a new uh, uh, you know, Flash standalone or an Aquaman standalone. These characters don't have the grounding to do it, to stand on their own. You need to start with Justice League, or I said, but they'll never do it, you need a Batman versus Superman. But I said they'd never do it. I mean, I, I never dreamed that they would be that smart. But apparently, they are smart. As smart as me, almost. Warner Brothers has announced that we now know who the new Batman is that will be facing off against and ultimately teaming up with Henry Cavill Superman. And it's none other than Ben Affleck. Uh, Schnepp, you and I just got off the phone with each other when this news broke. We haven't even talked about this yet. Your initial reaction, your initial thoughts when you hear that Ben Affleck is the new Batman. When you told me that, I said, is it April Fool's Day? I mean, in my mind, <laughs> that's what I thought. I was like, no way can Ben Affleck be uh, Superman. I mean, he's played George Reeves in Hollywood Land, that's So he's right. actually played the actor who played Superman. He's been an, a superhero already as Daredevil. So it was like, to me, it was like out of left field. But the more I'm thinking about it and the more I'm hearing about it, and the more I'm reading about it, it seems actually like a pretty cool casting decision. To me, the definitive personification of Batman has yet to be created on the big screen. Michael Keaton was the embodiment of the mental side, keeping the pain inside, staying in the shadows, and not making philosophical speeches in broad daylight. And Christian <laughs> Bale, as much as I adore him as an actor, was more the physical side of the character. Now that Team Snyder Affleck will be overseeing Batman for the next decade, do you think that there will be place to create the ultimate Batman, which is the world's greatest detective? Tall, fearless, strategic, physical, gadget-powered monster at night, and the Bruce Wayne multiple personas during the day? Or will we have to wait for the standalone movies to give us once and for all the Batman that we deserve? Well, I think, I mean, the question saying, is this, is this new uh, Snyder Affleck movie going to serve that version of his Batman, which is more so the comic book Batman, right. what he's describing? And I think it is. I mean, Affleck is the biggest Batman fan. A lot of people forget that he took on Daredevil because he was like, I'll never get to play Batman, so this is the closest I'll get. He, a lot the of dude, people, built a Batcave bat yeah. in his house. In his house, he has a like Batcave. Ten years ago, yeah. he physically built a Batcave. So he's a sweaty Batman <laughs> fan. He's like, I have all the issues. He's like probably a bigger Batman fan that Nicolas Cage was a Superman fan. And Nicolas Cage named his son Jarrell. So you know Ben Affleck's all sweaty and working out <laughs> and reading. And he's like, he's going to be a detective first, you know. So to, I think to answer your question, you're going to get your comic book Batman with Ben Affleck. Many of us have been waiting for the July 2015 release of the upcoming Batman versus Superman movie. Well, it looks like we're all going to have to wait a lot longer. WB announced that the film has been pushed back to May 2016. In a press release, WB said they moved the date to give the filmmakers time to realize <coughs> fully their vision given the complex visual nature of the story john what do you make of wb moving man of steel to nearly a year they screwed up uh look i talked for, uh, on amc mailbag this weekend for about this for about a half hour but let me just sum it up <laughs> um either there wb and dc have dropped the ball and they've screwed this up so. Snap. 
a whole year? <laughs> I mean, you know, when I heard that news, I thought at first it was like somebody was joking. It was just, oh, that's a mistake. It must be a few months. But in doing this show live, sometimes the news breaks after we've written the show notes Ooh. and a significant piece of news has just broken. This is being oh. confirmed by Variety Magazine right now. The title for the Batman versus Superman movie oh. has dropped. And here is the official title. The official title of Man of Steel 2 is actually Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice. Whoa! Nice one. Batman versus Superman, Dawn of, Dawn Justice. of Justice. And I want to thank all of you guys uh, who are on the chat board who just brought that to my attention. That's one of the great things about doing it live. We got all these guys in the live chat board saying, hey, John, this just happened. Wow. Once again, let me say this again. Wow. The title of the movie is Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice. Okay. So, John, so, tell us, what do you think? Um, okay. Uh, literally, I just heard this. I just read this. So, here's my initial reaction to this. My initial reaction is one, a little surprise. I really thought Man of Steel 2 would be the pre colon title. I thought it'd be Man of Steel 2, Batman vs. Superman, or Man yeah. of Steel 2, Dark Knight Returns, or something like that. But they're actually going in the title. Batman versus Superman. Yeah. Uh, I love the Dawn of Justice ed, uh, end title because that is that just that's just admitting what we know. Oh, yeah. You are using this film partially as a build up to Justice, Justice League. League. So this is a nice acknowledgement of that. I've always loved the Batman versus Superman title. Uh, like I said, surprise it's not Man of Steel two hyphen something, but I'm I'm looking at this. I like it. You know, we dropped the news yesterday about the new official title of, of Batman versus Superman, but it, literally the news dropped as we were doing the show, and so we just kind of quickly reacted to it. You know, Dennis and Christian weren't here, so I thought we would just take a couple of minutes to talk about, let's bring up that picture of the, the Batman. This is the new official logo. Uh, not a surprise or a big departure from what we've been seeing as, as tests, tests before. But I, let's talk a little bit more about this title that they dropped. So for those of you who may not have heard, the official title of the next Man of Steel film, the Man of Steel sequel, if you will, is Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. And I said, I looked at it, because I saw it for the first time when we were on air, live, and I saw it, and I, the first thing I said was, you know what, I think this works. I think it's worked. And the reason I think it works is, number one, I never liked the idea of World's Finest. Um, to me, that was a stupid title. Because, first of all, nobody knows any significance of what that means, and you take away the background comic influence of it, then on its own, the words have no impact or meaning. Plus, this isn't the world's finest story. This is a different story. I like the fact that they called it Batman vs. Superman because that is what it is. And that's what we've all been talking about it. And we all know that this is a film that is segueing us into Justice League. So adding Dawn of Justice in there, um, to me, worked. And that's, that was my initial reaction to it. Looking at it more, it makes even more sense. And I like it even more. And, and part of the reason is I have a legal background. And one of the things is the, the whole V thing, that is an adversarial thing in courts. When you go to court and you're reading old court cases, it's, you know, uh, Smith v. California or Brown v. Judah Baker or whatever. And that, that's the way they do it. And the first name in the title of, of a court case, so Smith v. California, is the grieving party. It's the one bringing the grievance, the one saying the first party has a problem with the second party. And that's the legal way that that's set up. And so then when I look at that title, it kind of makes sense to me, number one, that they left the, the S out of the V, because a lot of people are like, why did they leave the S out? And I admit, that was the first thought in my head, too. But even though I know what it means, I thought, but still, why leave the S out? Now it makes sense to me. Batman is the one coming after Superman in this film. I have no doubt about that. Um, and I like the fact that it's done. And Dawn of Justice, to me, works. Because, like I said, the first half, that is what the movie is. The second half is also what the movie really is. It's calling it what it is. As you know, Zack Snyder is currently working on the new Batman vs. Superman, a.k.a. Man of Steel 2. And he got on his Twitter today, and he put out a little tweet that says, it's almost time to untarp it, maybe tomorrow. And he brings us this picture. Steve, there it is. He tweets out this picture. As you can see, it is what we can all only assume is the new Batmobile. And we were kind of talking about this picture uh, a little bit that, pardon me, it kind of looks like the back end looks like it's very much influenced by the tumbler. And although we can't see the rest of it, the shape of the tarp kind of makes me think that the front end of the, of the, the car is what I call very Keaton-y, very <laughs> Michael Keaton Batman-esque. So a little bit of the best of both worlds. 
I think this, this is really the first real, physical, practical thing we've seen of the new Batman versus Superman, which is really exciting. I gotta tell you, I, I like that they've kept the influence of the Tumblr mm -hmm. a bit there. Mm -hmm. That was a nice direction, but that front of it looks so much like the first Tim Burton Batman card, the two. We'll see when it gets on tarp tomorrow. And Schnepp, you just had a chance to see this picture. What do you think about it? Uh, no shoe mockery. It's like, Not shoe yeah. mockery. Burton-y. <laughs> no neon yeah. lights. Yeah, Burton-y, nolan -y, zero shoe mockery. Yeah, uh, it looks cool from like everything that we could see just from two tires and a weird kind of, you know, uh, what would you call it, a spoiler fin in the back? Yeah, or something? something like that. So yeah, it, I would I would hope that they combine the best of both worlds. You know, that I'm excited to see the Batmobile tomorrow. Hopefully they'll have Batman standing in front of it, so. Yeah, I, I doubt it. I don't think they're ready to show us that. <laughs> now, yesterday, we showed you that Zack Snyder, uh, he tweeted out the very first sneak peek, still kind of half under the tarp, of the Batmobile. And he said, more to become uncovered tomorrow. So we were kind of expecting a shot of the Batmobile. Now, yesterday, um, some buffoon at this table, I'm not going <laughs> to name names, <laughs> um, said, wouldn't it be cool if they actually showed Batman standing in front of the Batmobile? To which I rightfully replied, Schnepp, you ignorant slut. <laughs> you fool. You, you moron. You, you optimistic nerd. Of course they're not going to show Batman standing in front of the Batmobile. And of course I was right. Oh, wait, I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I totally knew it was going to happen. I just, I just so let's it. bring up that picture. We're sitting here. Let's, let's take a look at this picture. Dear heavens. Yeah, so cool. Dear heavens. How cool is that? Well, it looks like the showdown is over for the last couple of months. Both Captain America 3 and the upcoming Batman vs. Superman film have been scheduled to open in theaters on the same day of May 6, 2016. But now DC has announced they are moving Batman vs. Superman, <clears throat> which will now open in AMC theaters on March 25, 2016. Uh, John, what are your thoughts? Well, I mean, look, you're right. We, we have said this forever, that one of them was going to move. Was I fascinated by the concept of what would happen if <laughs> Captain America 3 and Batman v Superman opened on the same day? Yes, I was as fascinated as anybody by, by that. But we knew one of them was going to move. And let's be honest, we've been saying for a while it was going to be DC. Mm -hmm. Had Batman v Superman and Captain America 3 gone head to head, would Batman vs Superman have won that the box office that weekend? Yeah, yeah, they would have won the box office that weekend. But they also would have been hurt, and it would have been hurt badly by Captain America 3, because Captain America 2 was just so unbelievably good. And let's be honest here, DC and Warner Brothers needs Batman versus Superman to be not a hit, it has to be a colossal blockbuster. They need this to be huge, more than Marvel needs Captain America 3 to be huge. Marvel could have taken a hit with Captain America 3, and they would have been fine. Batman versus Superman could not take a hit. They need this to be huge. They need it to be big because they're trying to reestablish this whole cinematic universe. Is it cowardly? I'm having a lot of people tweeting me and asking me, was it cowardly of DC to move off the date? No, it wasn't. This was the smart move. Mm -hmm. This was the right move. And I agree with Amy Rose completely. Moving it ahead was a much better move than moving it backwards, because now mm -hmm. you get out in front of things, you get to open your movie first, you get to set the standard, and Amy Rose is 100% right. Had they pushed it back to say August, October, or something like that, it would have been perceived as more weakness this was a smart move for WB and all around just the right thing for them to do. Late last week, reports came out that Batman vs Superman was rumored to be splitting into two films. The first would be called Batman vs Superman Enter the Night and the second would be Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice. It also said the first one would come out in 2015. I haven't heard you guys talk about it and was wondering what your thoughts are. Thanks and let's have a great 2015. Okay, I'm going to do my best not to go into full all-out rant mode here, okay? <laughs> so here's the thing. So that thing came out, and I remember I first saw the picture, and uh, let's, let's, see, let's bring up that picture. Here's the graphic that everybody is talking about. This image here that you see, uh, Batman versus Superman, part one, Enter the Night, uh, which sounds like a really bad 1970s gay porn title, but whatever, uh, was for 25th, October 2015, part two, uh, Dawn of Justice uh, at, at its regularly scheduled date. So this image comes out, and I remember I see it, and I was like instantly intrigued. It's like, what's this? This is fairly interesting. Because just on its face value, it's like, will this kind of make sense? It was a really long shoot. Maybe they have enough material that you could split it into. We have been speculating on this show for a long time. Hey, you know what? 
I won't, I wouldn't bet on it, but I won't follow her shock if Warner Brothers shocks the world and comes out of Superman. So like, by the way, Batman vs Superman, October 2015, baby, and like just shocks everybody, right? I think that would be genius of them to do. So sure, it kind of fits into this little box, this narrative we've been creating about what could happen. It makes mm -hmm. sense, sure. But that is where my joygasm ended. <laughs> Because then I'm like, well, what's the source? There's got to be a really cool source. This came out of Warner Brothers. This came out of a guy who we know did this. Blah, blah, blah. Here's what this image is. And let's bring this picture up one more time. Let's bring this up. Here's what this picture is. It is a random, unverified, anonymous picture on Imager that somebody then shared on Reddit. Nobody knows who it came from. There was absolutely no verification to its authenticity, no, no evidence at all, not a shred of anything to suggest this could be real. There is nothing in the world, and I read every site that ran, well, I couldn't read every site that ran this as a story because every site did. But there was absolutely no shred of evidence to suggest this is anything other than some 14-year-old with moderate Photoshop skills who just put together a graphic and threw it online. Nothing, nothing at all. So those are, those are the kind of details that Zach, being so physical himself, loves preparing. I think there's going to be a big difference when you see these Batman fights in comparison to the previous ones. John, what do you make of Grispo's comments? Oh, I love them. I love them for, for on two different levels. First of all, let's call a spade a spade. Everybody knows how much I really love the first two Christopher Nolan Batman films, and I'm a big fan of Christopher Nolan in general. But what I've always said, no matter how much I love the first two Batman films, is one of the one of the weaknesses of, of those things have been the, the fight action sequences. Ah! Uh, and then <laughs> rapid cut, edit, 55 shots, you can't even really see what's going on anyway. Right. Um, and I felt in that regard we were kind of missing the Batman we wanted to see on screen. And so to hear that they are embracing that in a lot of the different types of mythology and the different, there's many different threads to the Batman back backstory depending on who the writer was. But in a lot of them, this is a guy who traveled the world to learn every martial art there was. He is like the supreme human fighting machine, right? And to see that actually come to life would be awesome. And I love the fact that he's just going head on. They're, they're not dodging it. I think one of the fears a lot of us have had in this Batman v Superman is what we would get is like Batman's investigating Superman and Superman's suspicious of Bruce Wayne and maybe they have an argument but it never comes to blows. You know, I think a lot of us have been worried about that. Apparently we don't have to worry about that. Apparently he, this guy has worked on something. They're ra ramping it up a whole bunch and they're already talking about the fight sequences. Yeah, very exciting news. It was great to read about the choreography. I'm with you with the Nolan, like weird cl up close camera movements and 50 edits. You can never, I just watched Batman Begins again a couple weeks ago and I was like, ah, oh, the action scenes really suck. They do. They're just like, he's fighting ninjas, but you can never see what's happening. People just fall down. So to read that you know, we're actually going to be able to see a really cool choreographed fight scene. And I love uh, the way Zack Snyder directs action. So I think, you know, we're, we're in for a treat. The highly anticipated Warner Brothers DC film Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice is now less than a year away. And the amount of excitement and anticipation for the film is completely going off the scales. Last week, the first official trailer for the film hit and the reaction to it has been overwhelmingly positive. But the big question that we're all still asking is this. Will the movie actually be any good? Will it live up to the hype that it's had since Comic-Con a few years ago when it was first announced? Will it meet the expectations we've all had ever since reading Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns so many years ago? Back in 2013, after the movie was announced, but long before we had any of the information about it that we have today, I created a video called Five Things Man of Steel 2 Needs to Do to Succeed. In it, I talked about the elements I felt the new movie needed to have it in order to work. Now, after learning all we know about Batman vs. Superman, including that it's actually called Batman vs. Superman, and after seeing the trailer, I wanted to revisit those five points I raised in 2013 and now talk about the five reasons Batman vs. Superman is going to succeed. Point number one, continue the development of Kal-El. The point I was trying to make in the original video was that by the end of Man of Steel, we only just really met Superman. Kal-El had just truly realized what his identity is, but he's only at the start of his journey. We need to see this movie take time to delve into who Kal-El is now. What is shaping him? Who is he becoming? And from the trailer to Batman vs Superman, it looks like we're getting just that.
In the trailer, we see the world trying to make sense of who and what Superman is. More than that, I think we're getting our first glimpses into Kal-El having that same struggle about himself. What is his role in this world now? What kind of man, what kind of Superman should he be? What does the world need from him? This is exactly what this movie needs to start with. Point number two, give big time to Batman. Back in 2013, I said in order for this movie to work, you can't simply introduce us to Batman. Batman has been and continues to be the crown jewel in the Warner Brothers crown. He is by far the most popular comic book hero in the world and arguably the most important character in this brand new DC Cinematic Universe. In order for this universe to work, Batman needs to work. We got our first hint that Warner Brothers understood this by the title of the new movie, Batman vs. Superman, and in the trailer we clearly see that Warner is all in on Batman. We aren't simply going to get a flash of Batman here and there with some big reveal at the end. This is going to be a Batman movie just as much as it's going to be a Superman movie. Warner Brothers has nailed this and positioned this movie for success because of it. Point number three, focus on Batman and Superman. Now, this may go without saying, but remember that in 2013, the name we all knew this movie by was still Man of Steel 2. But this movie can't just be about Batman, and it also can't just be about Superman. It needs to zero in on the relationship, the dynamic, and yes, the conflict between the two of them. It couldn't be the two of them bumping into each other on the street and going, Hey, you like fighting crime? Me too! Let's go get some bad guys! And when that trailer hit last week, we saw that this movie is indeed going to soak in that relationship, that dynamic, and that conflict. The trailer oozed it. This conflict is going to be the heart of Batman vs. Superman, and that's another reason why it's going to work. Point number four. Introduce us to Lex Luthor. My point in 2013 was that while you don't need Lex Luthor in every single Superman movie, you can't escape that Lex is THE ultimate Superman villain. Lex is the Joker to Superman's Batman. They are inseparable. They are interconnected. To properly have one, you must have the other. I never said Lex had to be the key figure in the new movie, but in this, Superman's second film, you had to at least introduce us to him. Since 2013, we learned that Lex is a player in the film and being played by Jesse Eisenberg, obviously. And we even hear Jesse in the new trailer talking about devils coming from the sky. Having Lex's presence in this film is only going to help, especially if they do him right. Point number five, resist the urge to make it a Justice League movie. Back in 2013, we all started speculating about which other DC heroes would show up in this brand new DC Cinematic Universe. But my opinion was that you have to keep it a Batman and Superman movie, not a Justice League film. I started to get a little bit worried when we learned that Wonder Woman would be there, then Aquaman, then Cyborg, and who knows who else. But once that trailer hit, it became clear. They may be introducing us to all these new characters in this new DC Cinematic Universe, but this movie, Batman vs. Superman, is going to be about Batman and Superman. They will be the core of it. It will revolve around them. The Justice League movie will come. The other characters will get their chance to shine in the sun in the other films, but this one is Batman vs. Superman. The brand new Batman vs. Superman trailer has just dropped from Comic-Con. Hopefully by now you have seen it. I will have a link to it in the description below if you have not seen it yet. I have just watched it. Yeah! Holy shit! That trailer's fucking awesome! I'm so I'm sorry, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna tone it down. I'm gonna bring it down. Look, I loved the first Batman vs. Superman trailer because I saw elements in there. I'm one of those people, and I know there's not a lot of us, who read the comic series of Injustice Gods Among Us. And if you did, then you saw that that first trailer was a beautiful amalgamation of The Dark Knight Returns with Injustice Gods Among Us, kind of bled into one. And I thought it was a, br I thought it was a very, very, very good trailer. I loved it. Not everybody did, and I get it, that's fine. Personally, I loved it. But this trailer, I can't imagine what excuses people are going to come up with to say why they didn't like this trailer. Everything is subjective. 
totally is. I'm just saying the way my mind is, is spinning right now, the way they set up the anger and the rage of Bruce Wayne, what he saw in just this little three and a half minute trailer, him watching his people die and him watching his building coming down, why he sees Superman as such a threat that he feels he needs to stop, why Superman maybe sees Batman as being a villain or a bad guy. Yeah, the way they introduce Lex Luthor, holy crap, when they open up the body bag and you see Zod, so... You know the DNA of Zod is going to come into play here. Uh, they showed a shot of Wonder Woman, so clear she's going to have a role to play in this. All I know is that this this trailer set up story, it set up character, and showed incredible action. Now remember, let's take a deep breath. It's just a trailer. The movie could still suck. So before you start saying that to me, yeah, John, well, other trailers are great. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with you. Absolutely. This movie may end up sucking. But today, we are just talking about the trailer. And this trailer kicks copious amounts of ass. The whole way they, even that whole like Senate hearing thing where they set up, it reminded me a little bit of that Iron Man movie where the Senate wanted to talk to Tony Stark and maybe hold him responsible for the technology that's out there and blah, blah, blah. That's fine. This looks like it steals all of that thunder and does it way better. I think there are so many different layers of things they can do here. And this trailer just set it up. Now, granted, I just saw the trailer. I got goosebumps on my arm and I'm still really psyched and pumped and going a little crazy. This is completely unprofessional, but I don't care. This fucking trailer, again, sorry, is amazing. I cannot wait to see this movie. I'm going to go back, watch the trailer about 20 or 30 more times. Guys, I want to know what you think. Jump into the, the description or jump into the comment section of this video. Please let me know your thoughts. Um, what did you see in there that maybe worried you? Because right now I'm just so overwhelmed by how awesome I thought it was that I maybe need to watch it a few more times to see maybe things that worry me about it. But right now I don't recognize any, so I got to watch it more. But did you see elements in the trailer that maybe left you feeling a little bit worried? What parts did you really, really love? Let me know your thoughts in the, in the description below. So that'll do it for me, guys, for Collider Video. Thanks for joining me, and uh, let's together get really excited about Batman vs. Superman. Highly anticipated Warner Brothers film, Batman v Superman, is still six months away from hitting theaters oh. on March 25th. <laughs> Ray, Ray strikes Ray. again. So good, Ray's the best. <laughs> On to uh, March 25th, 2016. <laughs> but we now have the film's official rating from the MPAA. I wonder what it is. <laughs> according, according to the association, Batman v Superman will be rated PG-13 for intense sequences of violence and action throughout and some sensuality. Yeah. Fearing the actions of a godlike superhero left unchecked, Gotham City's own formidable forceful vigilante takes on Metropolis's most revered modern-day savior, while the world wrestles with what sort of hero it really needs. And with Batman and Superman at war with one another, a new threat quickly arises, putting mankind in greater danger than it's ever known before. Ahead of Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice's debut this Thursday night, a number of lucky people saw Zack Snyder's epic superhero movie at the New York and Mexico City premieres. The word is in. The reactions are overwhelmingly positive. Some of the most notable reactions to the movie include thunderous applause for Wonder Woman's reveal. Ben Affleck's Batman being hailed as one of the best, with many fans calling this one of the best superhero movies of all times. We will still have to wait for the critics to chime in, but for now it appears that Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman are a hit among the fans. Mark, what are your reactions to the fans' praising of Batman v Superman? Well, I like hearing this news, Natasha, but I would hesitate to say the word is in, because these are a few lucky fans who got to see screenings ahead of the actual release of the film, so I can't judge it. I, I'm not going to take this to the bank that, oh, the movie's great because a select few theaters had fans that love seeing the movie. Look, you're excited to be there early. That's great. I'm very excited to hear this news. I'm just not going to judge the quality of the movie based on early word of mouth that I hear. I need to see it for myself. Now, luckily, I'm going to get a chance to do that with two of my good buddies, Christian and John Schnapp. We're seeing it tonight, lads. We yeah. get to check this movie out. It's been a long, long wait, and it's finally upon us. And for the rest of you, or at least most of you, you're going to get to see it this weekend starting Thursday night, probably around 10 p.m., wherever the hell you live. Uh, it depends. Yeah. I mean, I think that it depends sometimes on the particular critic. You know, if the, if the critic is someone that you know, we know or, or that we trust their opinion or even not someone necessarily that we know personally, but have read and have similar opinions totally. and then the same thing with friends like there's yeah. some people that'll see the movie that i'm friends with that they like everything that i'm right. just like ah I, I'm, I'm gonna wait and then there's someone else who has the same taste as, as i do what i will say it's funny it's a it's a no win for critics though 
because even if they're no, no matter because uh, perfect examples when we were talking that like I think Zack Snyder is really good at, at a lot of visual stuff. I thought that he developed Superman really well, and I've said that there's a lot of things that Snyder does well, and there's some things that I think he's more of a visual director. There's this, this girl on Twitter who to me to me is just like you don't like Zack Snyder, you don't like him, you hate him, you hate him. That's how like, she sounds. Like, yeah, and I'm like wow. I'm, I'm like I, I I clearly do not hate him. I think that there are things that he does that I'd like to see him do better, and maybe he does it in this movie right. one of the things i'm very excited about so we'll see what did falcor say he's here yet falcor <laughs> loved it and then he flew, flew away with a little tiny person on his <laughs> on his very small neck yeah i agree i mean you know what uh, like if i have friends who i know are like they're you know sometimes somebody will be like oh, i hated it that means in ah oh, that, that means i'll love it you know because that's just like i have friends who like have opposite tastes that i have and then other times it's like I'll read a bunch of reviews, and there are like a lot of reviewers that I trust, or I like, I like their sensibilities or what they're into. So if they like it, or if they say something really positive about it, I know I'm gonna kind of be on that same side. But I always use, you know, I have to see the movie for myself. I can never 100% be vouched by any a fan or a critic, and I think that's how everyone should be. Like critics and anybody who puts anything online, it's just for you to try to make your final decision whether you see the movie, and then you might hate it or love it. So well, luckily we only have about seven hours. In 50 minutes Woo. left, not that anybody's counting. Hey everyone, and welcome to the Collider Video Review, spoiler free, of Batman v Superman. My name is Mark Ellis, and I'm thrilled to be joined by some of my best pals on the planet and the people who I just saw the movie with, Mr. Dennis Zhang, John Campia, Christian George Harloff, and <laughs> John Schnepp. My score out of 10 is I wish I could get this to six and make it a fresh movie on Rotten Tomatoes. Unfortunately, I just cannot quite do that, even though I liked watching some of it. 5.6 out of 10 is my score. I'm going to give it, I think maybe because my expectations weren't as high, I'm going to give it a, a 7.5. I still I still was entertained by it. I still really like I. I this makes me really excited about a solo Batman film. So, <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Pretty much outweigh all my negatives. I came out of the theater again, entertained, looking forward to see it again. And while you use the word interesting, Schnepp, the introduction of the auxiliary Justice League characters that happens in the movie, mm -hmm. it's interesting. I'll be honest, I didn't love the way they did it. But, oddly enough... It made me more excited for what we might see later. So I'm not quite sure how that works, but no, I, you're right. I'm dying to see the Batman standalone film. I'm actually kind of excited now to see where they go with the Justice League stuff. So for me, my, I'm going to rest down on a solid 7.5. Okay. Um, but overall, I think that I wanted because I started. I've been. It's a roller coaster with this movie. <laughs> I it started out when it was announced. How I was like at a ten anticipation level of what I wanted to see, and then after a couple trailers, I was I, I dropped down, and then over the last couple of weeks, I've been back up. So my it was pretty high when going into it, but I think overall it didn't deliver the way I wanted it to, and I'm gonna say six point five out of ten. A lot of stuff that I wish just wasn't in the movie, and also just stuff that I wish they put in the film that would have just made it better. So you know, I didn't make the movie. All I can say is. I'm going to give it a seven. Make sure you guys stay tuned to Collider Video for a bunch of cool Batman v Superman stuff coming up this and next week. We'll catch you guys next time.